Built in 1922, East High School is a unique historic building beloved by the East Side community. Its facade and architecture hold beauty, but East needs significant renovations to become a facility meant to engage young minds, spark innovation, and deliver our vision of student-centered education. We have an opportunity to bring East and our other three comprehensive high schools into the 21st century with modern, flexible classrooms that support multiple learning styles. Safe spaces that are well-lit, inviting, accessible, climate-controlled, and that foster engagement, relationship building, and positive climate and culture. Buildings that reflect the value we place on Madison's growing minds, future citizens, leaders, and workforce. Through site visits, a review of the building's age and condition, input from our instructional team, and feedback from students, staff, and the East community, we have identified what we believe are the priorities at East that could be addressed with Future Ready 2020 referenda. 2020 referenda seeks to address much needed updates, like significant renovations of science labs, and science, technology, engineering, arts, and math learning spaces. 2020 referenda also calls for relocating the cramped music practice spaces closer to the theater and repurposing that area for classrooms. It would overhaul the building's mechanical system and air conditioning throughout the entire building would provide students with a comfortable and climate controlled environment in which to learn. It would also create an easily identifiable and welcoming main entrance on 4th Street where students, families, and visitors would access a secure entry and a relocated welcome center, main offices, and student services suite. And it would update and combine the split library media center into one larger, more open LMC. Community use and athletic facilities would also be upgraded. A new second story would incorporate a fitness room and locker rooms would be updated. All of this work would be aligned to our commitment to environmental sustainability. Through these high school projects, Madison has an opportunity to impact students in every attendance area and to modernize these buildings for the community's use. You have the opportunity through the Future Ready 2020 referenda to impact our students and community with buildings that better reflect the value we place on the education of our young scholars and to make East High School an educational facility that reflects both our community's rich history and our commitment to our future leaders. Thank you for your support. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brendan Carney and I am the principal here at East High School. It is my honor to welcome you tonight to tonight's Future Ready Referenda Information Session for the East High community. Uh, before I introduce our other presenters, I just wanna thank you all for being here. I know that you're here because you care about our schools, because you care about East, about our students, and about our community. This is a special place. Uh, I've worked elsewhere and I can tell you that's true. It's the heart of this community and I think that is best embodied in our students uh, they are creative, they are compassionate, they are committed to social justice, they care about learning, and they are diverse in every way, including race, ethnicity, language, identity, socioeconomic status. This is, this is one of the few buildings in the state of Wisconsin where everyone in a community gathers with a shared purpose, uh, in this case, the education of our young people. And our school and our school building carry a lot, carry a lot of history. And we value that. This is in fact the oldest school building in the district. It's nearly 100 years old. The centennial is coming up in 2022 and we're looking forward to a party. But uh, we also have a lot of work to do in order to do right by all of our students and our community. And that includes the condition of our facilities. Uh, students care about the history. They love the tower, the castle, you know, the facade, uh, but historic facilities do not show our students how much we value them and their future leadership. Uh, they do not communicate the sense of welcome and inclusion uh, that we hope for. And I know that because I've talked to them about it and I've talked to our families and our community members about it. Um, our students visit other schools and they come back and they ask us, why don't we have that? And the truth is there's no good answer to that question. 
Uh, we care as much about our students as anyone, and they deserve a 21st century educational facility that reflects that. Uh, so with that, I want to thank you for your support of our school and our amazing students. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce our other presenters tonight. Uh, first, it is my honor to introduce to you our new Madison Metropolitan School District Superintendent, Dr. Carlton Jenkins. I would also like to introduce Dr. Marvin Pryor, Chief of Secondary Schools. Mr. Michael Hernandez, also Chief of Secondary Schools. Dr. Mike Herding, Interim Chief of Staff. Kelly Ruppel, Chief Financial Officer. Chad Weesey, Executive Director of Building Services. Ananda Marilli, Board Member and board member Savion Castro. Thank you all for being here. I'd like to thank everyone for being here tonight. We're very excited to give our opportunity to have an opportunity to speak to our community about the things that Mr. Kearney just said, not only about East High School, but the other schools throughout our district. As we're looking forward to this November the 3rd election. It's a very important election. It's a presidential election, but it's also an opportunity for our community to weigh in on our very important future ready um, referendum that we have on the table. We want you to know everything that you need to know about the referendum. So we're here tonight to let you know just what it means when we say we're here for our students and we're putting the best effort forward to ensure that we can do those things that we say in our core beliefs when we talk about excellence, we're talking about belonging, creativity. We talk about racial equity and social justice and the voice for our students. We're trying to create the best environments for our students to be able to learn at the highest levels. And we know that our students here in Madison deserve the best facilities. Over the last few years, we've been making progress. And that progress, I mean, you can see it here as evidence. When you look at those number of students who are exceeding expectations, we are very pleased the fact that we're continuing every year to do that, but we know that we can do better because we are Madison. And in Madison, we are known throughout the state, throughout the nation and around the world for actually providing the best opportunities for our students. I have to say to you though, I was here in 1993 as an assistant principal at Madison Memorial High School. And upon my return back here as superintendent, the first thing I did, I went over to Madison Memorial High School and I just got a chill over my body looking at the building with excitement. But then when I looked at it the second time, I said, wow, this building looks exactly like it did in 1993. And I know here in Madison, we want more for our students. They deserve more. We want more for our community. And in order to do this, what we've done, we've gone out in the community and we've had conversations with our community. We're talking about 50 sessions that we actually had talking to our students, talking to our staff, talking to our parents and to the community. And as we had these conversations, we realized that we had over 4,400 responses from our community, which made us very excited to continue the dialogue about what things we needed to do to create the most remark remarkable opportunities for all of our students and all of our staff. So having said that, what we're looking at now is staying true to our strategic vision, ensuring that during COVID-19, that we're going to do whatever we can to create the best opportunities for our students now, but beyond now. We know after we've looked at our students, we've looked at our data and we've listened to our community, we've surveyed our community and it's come back overwhelmingly, just like Madison has done in the past, 82% of individuals indicating that this is the right time for us to go out for a referendum. So having said that, we really appreciate you and all the support that you continue to show to our students, to our staff, and just the support for MMSD. And at this time, I'm gonna give you some other colleagues to share with you some of the information that will really help you when you go to the ballots on November the 3rd. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. I have the honor of presenting um, the first question for you that would show up on the ballot for the November 3rd election. But before I do that, there are two questions on this ballot. The reason for the two questions is this school district, as Dr. Jenkins just stated, firmly believes in well-rounded children. If we were to just ask for a budget increase on the operating referendum, we would be neglecting the climate and culture of our school buildings 
and how the intersection between our instructional programming and our facilities are inter and codependent upon each other. So these two questions hold tightly intentionally when you go to the November 3rd ballot. Question number one on the ballot, you'll see in this slide right here. Our questions, when they show up on a November ballot, they're gonna be pretty technical. The law requires them to be so. And so we're gonna spend some time tonight helping you understand what exactly they mean and why we need them and what we're gonna use them for. So the first question on the ballot is called an operating referendum question. The intent of this question, what it's intended for, is to ask you, the voters, for your permission to increase property taxes above and beyond the state law. The state law has something called the revenue limit in place. That's where at the Capitol, they decide the maximum amount our Board of Education can ask you for in property taxes. That request here will be for $6 million in this current school year in 2021, on top of our overall revenue um, limit. $8 million for year two, $9 million for year three, and $10 million for year four. That's a cumulative of $33 million and what is called a reoccurring, meaning it stays in the base of our taxes for the future. Why do we need this? We need this because our state revenue re revenues are not tied to inflation or any other data point. Go ahead and flip to that next slide for me. Rather, for the last 10 years, They've been tied to a political kind of whims up at the state capitol. They're unreliable and they're not stable. And because of that, it makes it very hard for a school district to plan for the future and future ready students. What we need is revenue that we can rely on, bringing local control back to, back to Madison. And that is the reason we're asking for this authority. The board does not have to tax for this, but they would use this authority to help ensure that Madison Public Schools have what they need for our future ready students. And what are we gonna spend this on? That's a very good question. And in the next slide, what you're gonna see is our instructional vision led by our new superintendent, Dr. Jenkins. Dr. Jenkins has been unapologetic when he talks about early literacy and double downing on our reading strategy moving forward into the future. That reading strategy is based on investing in new reading materials in our early grades, tied to phonics and the science of reading, professional development for our teachers in the science of reading, and something we've been really excited about um, between the administration and the board is to launch a pilot program for full day 4K. We plan on investing in world language across middle school, arts, music, science, and investing in high quality teachers. Strategic equity projects that have been successful include our early college STEM Academy um, and our restorative justice programs. We have so much work here to do in Madison and we're excited to do it. In all, our total funding strategy on that next slide for this oper operating referendum would look like for the homeowner or a property taxpayer, $27 per year incremental increase for every $100,000 in home value. So if you had a $300,000 home, you would just multiply that number times three. And there's a calculator on our website for you to go and um, look at your own personal decisions when you go to the ballot on November 3rd. Thank you. I'm going to hand it over to Chad Weezy to talk about facilities. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly, as, uh, as Kelly just mentioned, we've got two questions on the ballot. So I'm here tonight to talk you through uh, the second one. Uh, it's good to be with uh, Per Golder Nation. Uh, just like Dr. Jenkins, uh, I actually got my start uh, uh, in Madison as well. 1998, I was hired by Milt McPike to teach science uh, at, at East High School. Uh, I remember going up to room 327 and thinking, huh, this, is, uh, this seems a touch outdated, but I'm going to make the best of it. Uh, spent seven years uh, building relationships with uh, staff and students. Uh, and still have a heart. My heart still goes, uh, is still at East High School. Um, and uh, room 327 uh, still looks the same as it did when I was hired uh, in, in 1998. Uh, it, it, I, I on occasion refer to it as a, as a time capsule, and that's certainly true of many of the other classroom spaces uh, at East. Um, I now am fortunate enough to be in charge of facilities around the district uh, and, uh, and know all the growth uh, and, and growth opportunities we've got in all these buildings. Uh, just like Kelly, we've got a, a long detailed question uh, that will be on uh, the ballot on November 3rd. 
I'm certainly not going to read it to all of you this evening, uh, but in a, in a nutshell, we're, we've got a $317 million uh, cap capital ask on the ballot uh, in November. Uh, many of the details on what would be included in terms of uh, upgrades and reinvestment exist in this question, and we'll get into more details tonight, uh, specifically around East as we keep going. I uh, can go to the next slide. Uh, the capital referendum, I think the best way uh, in a concise uh, manner to get through what's on the ballot uh, is to try to bucket these projects into three different groups. Uh, so one, uh, we are uh, proposing a major reinvestment in our four comprehensive high schools, uh, about $70 million per building. Uh, and we'll get into details tonight around what that potentially could mean for East. Uh, but we'd have similar reinvestments, uh, improvements and maintenance work that would happen uh, also at La Follette Memorial and West High School. Um, our website um, is up to date with all of the project details, including uh, those of East High School. Uh, so that's the first bucket. Uh, second, uh, we are proposing uh, consolidating a, a split program right now. We've got uh, two small uh, off-campus alternatives for, that are a high school setting for students 9th through 12th grade. Uh, Capital East High School and Capital West. Uh, currently, Capital East is just down the road from uh, East High School on the third floor of Lapham Elementary. Uh, so we have high school age students attending uh, a, a high school, essentially a small high school, um, on the third floor of an elementary school that's got kindergartners through second graders. Um, not an ideal setting for those students. Uh, Brendan uh, knows many of those students firsthand uh, that are going uh, going to that uh, going to Capital East. It is a um, super successful alternative to uh, some, some students that just need a smaller, more caring setting uh, than some of our bigger uh, comprehensive high schools. Uh, Capital West uh, is in, I think, a more dire uh, location right now. Uh, we currently are leasing a, a storefront across the, across the street from, Cap, uh, from Memorial High School uh, and have students going to a, a renovated storefront that we've done our best to make into a school. So we are proposing uh, taking those two six very successful programs uh, and moving them to one central location uh, at, at the Hoyt building. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Hoyt, uh, Hoyt is currently um, an old school that the district owns uh, and uh, currently has MSCR programming uh, and MSCR adults in, in kind of an office setting. Um, and we are proposing consolidating those programs, building Capital High School, which then would be our sixth high school, uh, including Shabazz, uh, and renovating that space for those students. Um, and very excited about th that, that possible uh, project. Uh, lastly, we are proposing building a new elementary school on the south side of Madison uh, in the Rimrock Road neighborhood. Uh, we've been working closely with the school board the last couple of months. Uh, we've made great progress in terms of the type of school. This is going to be a neighborhood school uh, that any of the students who live in that attendance area will be able to walk to. Um, and second, uh, we, we just have been working with the school board. Uh, they'll have a, 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 a vote coming up this Monday. Um, we are proposing buying Badger Rock Middle School and actually building an elementary school uh, addition on the Badger Rock uh, site. Uh, a little bit more about that, and you certainly can go to our website for more details. Uh, but for those of you who are familiar with some of the other East Side, uh, East Side Elementary schools, uh, we are proposing moving the staff and students of Alice Elementary School, uh, and that's the attendance area that, that serves that Rimrock Road neighborhood, long bus rides right now, 40, 45 minutes for some of our students. We're proposing moving the staff and students to that new site uh, where they have a chance to walk to school uh, students and families would have access to that new site. Um, and then we're proposing moving Nuestra Mundo Elementary School. Uh, that's a DL, DLI charter for us uh, that we are currently leasing an elementary school from Monona uh, that has not been a long-term solution for us at all. Moving them back to Alice Elementary, giving them room to grow, uh, vacating a leased school site um, and moving the entire uh, Nuestra Mundo School uh, back to Alice. I know that's a lot to follow, uh, and if you need, uh, certainly reach out to us if you have questions or need more details, certainly look to our website and then reach out to us if you've got those questions. Uh, the final piece uh, included in the, uh, these projects uh, is uh, the, the uh, of course, I've got dogs barking in the background, I apologize for that, uh, is uh, the fact that we want to make sure these projects are as, as green and sustainable as possible. Uh, we have uh, heard from the community in those 50 
uh, input sessions, and uh, I have actually added an additional $2 million of project proposals uh, to the green and sustainability uh, portion of, of, of all these projects. Uh, just as Kelly mentioned, uh, we uh, also want to make sure we're as transparent as possible around the tax impact uh, on these projects. Uh, for the time being, uh, as they're proposed um, and interest rates continue to be low, uh, we're estimating about $50 per $100,000 uh, in home value. Uh, that would be different than the operating referendum and the fact that this debt would eventually go away. Um, just like Olson Elementary School that we're close to paying off right now, uh, after 20 or 21 years, uh, all of the all of that debt would go away and and fall off the the books as far as taxes go. Next, um, I am going to quickly uh, take a chance uh, to walk you through uh, what is on uh, our website, uh, Brad. I think you just have to give me screen sharing ability. So I'm going to do this as quickly as possible. I know lots of folks that are uh, on Facebook tonight are interested in what's possibly. Uh, going to be uh, uh, in the East High School project. So I'll do my best to work, uh, work through this rather quickly. Uh, and as I said, all of these drawings are up on our website if you need more details. Uh, so I'm just gonna work us through uh, five quick drawings here. This is a site plan of East High School. Um, some quick highlights on this plan uh, would be the fact that we are proposing um, a synthetic turf field uh, on the back of East High School that could be used for uh, both practice uh, space and certainly Phi Ed space would be a great communi community space. Now, many of you are familiar with East know that this turns into essentially dirt uh, by the time the school year gets done because this is so heavily used. Uh, only a, a couple of small additions, the, 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 the remaining portion of these projects are actually all interior renovations. Uh, so we are proposing um, a second floor on the new addition that we just finished at East High School uh, that would be an athletic uh, and training center and there are pictures of those on our website. Also a new addition for a, a loading dock that kind of got gobbled up with the new, uh, the new gym that we ended up putting in. Uh, and this here is a new addition uh, that would be bumping out uh, in our cafeteria space, uh, a new kitchen uh, that would allow us to open up the inside of East High School. Uh, and as Brandon mentioned, we are proposing uh, a new entrance to East High School. Uh, right now, uh, if you walk up to East High School on 4th Street, it's really hard to tell where the main entrance of East High School is. Uh, we are proposing a fourth street entrance that would show our families where to go, a welcoming and safe and secure entrance. Uh, and we'd have instant access to uh, offices of some of our administrators supporting uh, all of our families and students and also uh, second floor access uh, immediately above that uh, area uh, to get to student services. As I work my way through here, uh, this is the really the ground level of East High School. Uh, any of you familiar with the locker room spaces, this is the main thing highlighted here. Our locker rooms aren't accessible. Uh, that is a, a, huge, uh, a huge flaw in terms of uh, those spaces. They're also incredibly outdated. Uh, so those would be completely refurnished and uh, be, they'd be made accessible. Uh, this is the kitchen and the receiving area I talked about before. On the first floor, I'll spend a little bit more time here. Uh, again, uh, redoing all of our locker room spaces. Um, we'll make sure that there's gender neutral areas for, uh, for all of our students who, uh, who don't have those spaces right now. Uh, here's what Brendan mentioned before, as you walk into the building, uh, we'd have a new office suite uh, to kind of consolidate and be real nice and handy for our families and students. Uh, the commons would get redone uh, and we'd actually open up and do away with the, the current outdated kitchen and replace it there. Um, and having a big open flexible space in the middle of the building to get you to the mall. Uh, you should know all the things on these drawings, things that are light blue are what we're considering light renovations, new lights, new new wall finishes and new floors. Uh, anything in, in, in that dark blue, uh, those are uh, very he heavy renovations, taking down walls, uh, stripping these right to the core uh, and building them back up. Uh, as you can see, we, we're gonna completely redo the tech ed area. Um, and all the vocational technology area at East, um, a new space outlined for science, tech, engineering, arts, and math. Uh, one of the major things that we're looking to do is get our um, art, our, our music program closer to that newly renovated theater space, um, getting them off the second floor. Uh, we've got lots of stories of students carrying uh, all of their music equipment and chairs and everything else needed for musical performances uh, down those stairs and back up again. Um, so we'd consolidate the music program in that area. Uh, also completely rethink the other side of the mall known as the Forum. 
uh, making it a useful, collaborative, flexible space uh, for all of our students. Uh, and lastly, on this one, a new elevator um, that would be in close proximity to that new entrance uh, to make sure East High School is as accessible as possible. Uh, on the second floor here, um, as we mentioned, the student services area would be stacked on top of uh, what is currently, uh, um, what, what currently is the cafeteria space. Uh, we've got music there right now at East. Uh, we're proposing brand new culinary spaces at East High School. Um, our kitchens are quite old and outdated. Uh, I know East has uh, many good partnerships with MATC in terms of uh, their culinary arts program. Here's that second floor fitness area I talked about. If you had a chance to watch the lead-in video, here's the LMC space we're talking about combining uh, on that first floor of East High School. Um, and then a complete redo of all of the career and technical education classrooms uh, on the first floor. Um, on the second floor, this is primarily light blue. Those are all classroom spaces. Those would all get uh, updated technology, new lightings, uh, new lighting. Um, all of East High School would end up with new windows. Um, our heating and cooling system would completely be renovated throughout. Um, and obviously those classrooms would feel that. Um, and uh, all new furniture, all new flexible furniture. Many of the student desks at East High School are 50 years old. On the fourth floor, uh, same deal there. All of the um, kind of classic East High School classrooms would be completely renovated. There's that new elevator. Um, and then a complete redo of all of the science labs, likely uh, stripped down right to the studs and completely built back up uh, to 21st century learning standards. Um, that is the quickest runaround I can give uh, for a uh, for $70 million in work. We're certainly here to answer uh, as many questions as pop up tonight. Uh, as I said, all those plans are on our website and accessible for all. Um, at this point, I think I am done with my spiel here to answer questions. Kelly, you might have something to add. We do. We have one last slide to wrap up this presentation before I hand it over to Ananda Morelli. And we would not want to be remiss to just make sure everyone understands that um, when you vote on November 3rd, and if these two questions both pass together, um, it would be a $60 increase for every $100,000 in home value. Um, that would accumulate over four years to about $130 per year. So we wouldn't be remiss if we didn't make sure everyone understood the investments that these two questions would make in our students and our facilities and getting us ready for future Ready Madison. So for that, Ananda, I think we're, we're done. We're ready to hand over to you for questions for Dr. Jenkins and the team. Thank you so much, Kelly, and thank you so much, Chad, for this presentation. And thank you so much for the communication team that is making all of this possible for us. My first question is for our new superintendent, Dr. Jenkins. Why, why all of this is important? Why those projects are important? And why are they meaningful to Madison specifically right now? You're, you're muted, which is gonna be the, the, the sentence of the day. Okay, great. Thanks, first of all, Ananda, for that particular question. And it, first of all, it's exciting for me to be back in Madison now uh, here as the superintendent. And as I initially stated, when I first came back and just excited to be back in Madison and I got out of my vehicle and I, I was at Madison Memorial and I said, wow, the same building. Uh, and we're trying to get to our 21st century standards and giving our students the highest quality of uh, facilities so that they can have the highest qualities of learning. We're in Madison and we expect a lot out of Madison. We're talking about in this particular time, opening up to a third of our students to be able to experience high quality learning environments, replacing some of the buildings, some of the things that's going on been 100 years old, some 50 years old. It's time now for us as we continue to show some progress with our academic proudness to be able to give our students the facilities that they deserve and need. It's very interesting during these times, uh, this pandemic has really had an impact on our community here in Madison, in our state, in the nation and around the world. We know for sure we will get through this pandemic together. And as we go through the pandemic, we wanna make sure that we have the best facilities we have the best staffing, highly trained staff here. So right now is the time to do it. It's not to wait until we come out. It's to do it now to invest so that our students, so that our staff and our community can live up to what we believe our students deserve and what our staff deserve and what our community deserve here in Madison. Mm. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Jenkins, for such inspiring words to, to kick off our, our presentation. My next question is going to be for Brendan, who is our principal here at East. Um, so I remember when, my first time walking through East High School. Uh, first, trying to figure out where to park, which door to go to. So I went to the back doors. They were locked. I went around the building. And then finally found the door. And then the next thing is trying to find the room that I was uh, going to have to go. And my hope was that that was the only room that I had to learn how to manage because it is amazing inside. I know you've been a teacher at East and now you're a principal. What are some of the things, what are some of the tangible things that both students and families can, can see as they're walking into the door? Yeah, I think, Ananda, the experience you just described is one that many of our students and families can relate to as well. And honestly, that's that's the first thing that I'm most excited about um, is to clarify and amplify the entrance to our building um, to create a truly welcoming entrance. The, the first time you walk into a building obviously shapes your entire experience with that building ever after. And I'm not sure that we're communicating what we want to to our students and families when they walk in here now. Um, Relatedly, bringing the student services and main offices up to the front of the building so that the community can get uh, what they need from us in a convenient, efficient manner without that confusion, without having to walk the literal three quarters of a mile that are required to get from the 4th Street entrance to the far side of the second floor, I think will we'll really have an impact on the way people feel about being in our building. And of course, it is, it is one of our most important goals at East to be welcoming and to create a space that people feel comfortable in. Um, and I can tell you, having come here as a teacher myself, um, it was intimidating. You know, the history of it was impressive, but once you get inside, um, it takes some figuring out. And I, I do recall the first classroom I taught in was an inner corridor classroom on the second floor. It did not have any windows. At the end of that year, I had to make a choice. There was an outer corridor classroom available, but to teach in it, I would have had to accept a, a temporary wall uh, where the teacher on the other side of the wall would be audible to our students while I was teaching. Uh, and these are not um, considerations that students and staff members should have to make in a 21st century school building. Um, so I'm excited about uh, providing an environment where both our students and our staff can do the best. Um, I would also add the climate control piece, which may seem like sort of a side note to a discussion like this when you're looking at larger and more exciting pictures of things is very important. Uh, your climate in this building is different according to which floor and what part of, of each floor you are on. And these things do impact student learning. Uh, we want students to feel physically comfortable in this building so they can focus on what matters most, which is their learning. Um, and beyond that, I would say the, the other thing I'm most excited about is the opening up of spaces for more collaboration uh, and more community building opportunities for our students, uh, bringing more light and air into the building. Um, but most importantly, uh, gathering spaces or the sort of the diversity of our community that I mentioned earlier as I was speaking, um, can be displayed, can be supported, can be elevated, uh, because right now in any given space in our building, uh, you may not be able to see more than 10 or 15 feet in any direction with all the walls and all the turns. Uh, and the truth of the matter is that does have a daily impact on the experience of being in our building for kids. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about the idea of having a space that reflects our values. Uh, right now it reflects our history, but the rest of our values, uh, I think it has some catching up to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Brendan, for, for giving us this visual of what is the current state at, at uh, East High School and uh, the possibilities, what that building can be, right? Like it hasn't really reached the full potential yet. So I wanna change gears because you mentioned some uh, aspects of the interior of the building. I'm gonna, I wanna to, uh, um, ask some questions of Chad who has been with this project, really intimate in this project and really uh, thinking creatively and then really expanding the thinking around what are some of those learning spaces could look like. And also some of the pieces that sometimes we take it for granted, but are extremely essential as when we talk about inclusive spaces, when we talk about the spaces that respect uh, all our students. So Chad, can you talk to us a little bit more about some of the things that Brendan described regarding the lighting, regarding the temperature, regarding uh, you know, gender inclusive bathrooms, accessibility, you know, you mentioned that on your presentation. Can you walk us through like why has those things have not happened to me? Like to me, it feels like 
wait, like this didn't happen before, right? Like, so maybe some of our, our residents are asking like, wait, didn't we have that? Why do we need more? So talk to us a little bit about like, why is this coming so late and, and what has happened in the past and why are we in the space where we are now? Yeah, um, Ananda, I wish we weren't there just like you, um, without a doubt. Um, I think as Kelly mentioned before, these two questions on the ballot dovetail with each other. Um, our school budgets have continued to be uh, tight year after year and decade after decade. Um, and um, our community, in turn our school board uh, and our district, we've made decisions to um, uh, prioritize uh, making sure we have well-paid teachers and we've got uh, highly qual qualified staff. Uh, and we've put uh, the lion's share of, of that money each year uh, towards the kids. And we've kind of left the brick and mortar uh, to sit and we're doing the very best we can. Uh, and uh, you know, our, my annual budget right now is about $5 million. Uh, so about a dollar uh, a square foot to maintain the entire school district. Um, and uh, it's, uh, and you, you find, and this is not just true in Madison, uh, but around the entire state, uh, you find that those budgets are inadequate. And uh, on occasion, you need to uh, go to the taxpayers and ask, just like if you're re-roofing your house, um, we're kind of taking out a home equity loan on East High School. Um, and it's time to, it's time to reinvest. Um, and quite honestly, Madison's a little late to the table. Uh, um, you, you walk all the way around uh, our area school districts, you cannot find a community that doesn't have a shovel in the ground, ground right now, or a community that hasn't massively re, uh, you know, reinvested in their facilities because the stuff kind of just goes in cycles. Um, so to your point, it is incredibly overdue. Um, we're excited about the possibility of, of working with the East High School staff, working with the East High School students and the community uh, to plan and refine these projects if a referendum were to pass. Um, and all of the things that you mentioned, uh, we could see come to life here in the next few years. Um, I hope that answered your question. It's been, it's, it's a long time overdue. Uh, a lot of the things you mentioned uh, would, uh, would be kind of what I would consider baseline. Um, accessibility, and that's not just accessibility in terms of uh, making sure you can get from the first floor to the second floor, it's gender accessibility. Uh, it's making sure that our students are comfortable. It's making sure that the lighting uh, is conducive for, to, to learning. It's making sure that the furniture is flexible and comfortable. Um, all things that will just be kind of the foundation of these projects. Um, and then all the other stuff layered on uh, is, is kind of icing on the cake. But uh, it's, uh, uh, it's long overdue and it's quite honestly exciting. Mm, thank you for elevating a great need, specifically for our students that have multiple abilities navigating space and learning spaces that they are outdated. Um, I wanted to um, uh, shift gears a little bit and then close my part of the questions and before I turn into my colleague Savian and to bring in Dr. Jenkins and, and potentially Mike Hernandez, who is a former principal at East, to talk a little bit about, you know, this time capsule cap, capsule idea. I, you know, we heard from, from Brendan talking about, you know, the room back in the day, you know, in the 80s being the same. Uh, Chad mentioned uh, in a, in a, in a, private conversation, like, you know, rooms that are also known as time capsules, like the spaces where it has stuck in time. So what is it like to lead a district in schools where, you, you know, things that have not been to matching to the learning expectations that we want uh, for the district and for our schools? So uh, Dr. Jenkins, do you want to, I see that you were muted yourself, do you want to bring it in? And then I'm really curious, uh, Mike, you know, if you wanted to say a few more words for us. Yes, and uh, what I would say, first of all, coming in, is just great respect for the way that the district has tried to be so responsible over the years and making sure that we were doing everything that we could to provide other resources and taking care of our students taking care of our staff and being fiscally responsible with the budget. Over the last few years, you can see that the district has made some tough chart choices during some tough times. And that actually put us in a position of where we are now very favorably when you begin to look at our ratings. And these ratings that we have now allows us to be able to go out and borrow money at a very, very, very low interest rate, like historically, low interest rates. So first of all, that is exciting within itself. And then to have the opportunity 
now to come back and say, wow, we could take these time castles. And I love the way actually Brendan said it. You know, we're talking about our history. You know, we love Memorial High School. We love East. We love West, right? We love our schools. We love La Follette. But at the same time, we want to have facilities to take our children into the 21st century for real and to be able to be competitive, not only just on a local level, but a national level, and to create classroom environments where students can have an opportunity to learn, teach, have the appropriate space to teach our students at the next level. And this referendum also gives our students the best opportunities to have the air quality that they need for students who may have those challenges and just for all of us, honestly. So I'm very excited uh, to be leading a district that's thinking enough of our students to put us in the best position to give our staff the best community and to just keep MSD moving forward. Ananda, the, the question you ask is is something that I've I've had many conversations with with some of our community members. Um, you know, driving down East Wash, <clears throat> I still get goosebumps seeing the castle. Right, you talk to any any alumni, uh, you talk to the kids, and they refer to it as the castle. There, there's great pride in that. Um, um but I, I flip the script on this is you know over the last five or six years. Um, East has been able to have that complete focus on the academics as well as getting to a school in which they, they met and exceeded all expectations. Um, uh, I say this to people, I'm like, imagine if we had 21st century facilities for our staff, which are amazing, and the kids to be see what they could do with that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and they deserve that. Um, our kids, our community deserves that. I can't say it any clearer than that, but it's it's nothing but a privilege um, to see what the the kids and the staff do. Um, uh, it's I'm so excited about the opportunities when you if you go onto our website and look at the possibilities. I mean that is that is East High School. It's going to be exciting. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jenkins, and thank you, Mike, for reminding us that East High School, it is a landmark in our community. You know, it is a place of reference in East Washington. Whether or not you have children, whether or not you, you know, been in a building, like it is, it is a place of reference. So I want to turn now to my colleague, Stephen Castro, who's uh, going to continue to ask some, some really important questions that are coming through. And just a reminder, if you are watching us, make sure to uh, put your comments or your questions on our Facebook Live, on our YouTube, and then we'll uh, bring those questions forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ananda. Um, and this qu next question will go to Chad. Um, and that question is, when would con construction start? And will we get updates updates on the progress of that? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, the a, a quick timeline post referendum, uh, we would we would, uh, you know, if, if a referendum were to pass in November, uh, we would spend about the next year uh, working with all these school communities. So in the case of East High School, uh, we would be working with staff, students, and community members uh, to further out these plans. Um, there certainly uh, will be changes to the bo the colored boxes uh, I showed you as we get further and fur further along uh, with the design in these projects. Uh, it would be on me and it would be on our construction manager, Findorf, uh, to continue to bring these in on, on budget. Uh, but, but as the plans became more and more detailed, uh, we would they would be kind of come to life uh, in terms of what East High School really needs in their classrooms. It would take a full year. That's why we're taking that long. Uh, so following a year of design, uh, we would actually not start construction until the summer of 2022 uh, would be the first summer you would see major at East High School. Uh, and then East High School would be under construction that full school year, the school year of 22-23. We'd have another summer, the summer of 2023, uh, for heavy construction at East High School. Uh, and then the project will be wrapped up uh, to start that start that next fall. Um, so it, it's a full three-year process by the time we get the thing all done. 
uh, but $70 million of work in a school that will still be full of staff and students um, does take a little bit of time. You can build a new high school like they just did in Verona uh, in about a year, but they did it in a cornfield. Uh, we would be uh, having to do uh, school construction uh, while the, the school is still occupied much of the year. Um, so I hope that answers your question. The first summer following uh, the first summer following a past referendum, we would likely do some environmental work. Um, so East High School still has a whole bunch of asbestos in it. Um, it's certainly safe because it's either uh, covered up uh, by layers of paint or layers of uh, tile in the floor, uh, but there would be a whole bunch of environmental work that would likely um, happen uh, the first summer following the referendum. But you would you would see. Uh, essentially two full summers of, of heavy construction and we'd be working on it uh, while staff and students are actually in the building. Thank you so much. Um, and this question uh, is live from our Facebook comments uh, for Mr. K K Kearney. Is renovating the forum area by the sophomore wall part of the plan? Uh, and can we preserve the mirrors for show choir students? Uh, yeah, Chad, you can feel free to jump in on this one as well, but um, renovations and forum are, are definitely planned uh, as part of opening up and combining the two library media centers, as well as creating additional collaboration spaces on that side of the mall. Um, and I don't think this is in the referendum planning, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say absolutely we will continue to have mirrors available for our art students, both in show choir and in other programs. Yeah, so Brandon, I can add on to that. As I mentioned, we're going to spend a full year with you and your students planning these projects. Uh, so uh, there's even a chance if we pick up a theme that that sophomore wall is super important to the East High School community. Heck, we can save the thing and build it into the renovation uh, for the forum. Uh, and certainly we'd be able to keep the mirrors if those are th those are things that are important. So yeah, um, there will be a major renovation to the forum. I remember doing lunch duty down on the sophomore wall. Uh, so if that's something that had to stay to continue to be part of historic East High School, we'd mesh it in uh, to the, the, the remodel in the forum. Thank you so much. Um, and this next question is for, for Kelly. Um, are there or can uh, this part of the district afford a tax increase during COVID-19? Yeah, so Dr. Jenkins really um, hit that question well in his, his opening comments. Um, we are well aware of the um, kind of economic hardship that many of our families are under right now. And the board took that into very serious consideration when making the decision um, in July to go to referendum. As a matter of fact, the board was going to potentially vote to go to referendum back in March. Um, and we had a vote scheduled um, in March. And when uh, COVID-19 kind of hit, um, the board made, I think, the very right decision to put a pause and deciding to go to the referendum um, and to identify what was happening in the community. And what we did is a second round of um, information from our community through polling um, to make sure we were still on the right track to gauge where our community was. Um, and in fact, the community told us that, that now is the time. Um, as Dr. Jenkins said, um, it may not ever be cheaper to do some of these facilities projects. Interest rates are at the, at the lowest they, they've ever been. We just went to a short-term borrowing as the district does every year and got a 0.2% interest rates. I've never seen, um, for at least in my history, um, for, for school bonding. Um, so that sets us up really well. Um, to go to bond for the first facilities project in the December, January timeframe where we suspect interest rates will still continue to be very low. Um, in addition to that, the labor market is very good right now for those construction projects. Um, Chad mentioned there's a number of projects happening in the community, um, Sun Prairie and whatnot, projects that will be ending um, just about the time we're bringing on those construction firms. Um, so we also anticipate this really being kind of a buyer's market when it comes to the construction market. Um, so in a lot of ways, you know, now is the time. So when we come out of COVID, um, we are ready, um, frankly, not just to go back to where we were, but to come back to a, a new MMSD post COVID um, in an era that is ready to change both the instructional model um, for students and the facilities at which they sit in. So um, I think the community has told us now, now is the time and, and we, we hope that uh, we're ready for that. Thank you so much. And I think it's worth asking the question of, can we afford not to when we consider uh, what 
commitment we want to demonstrate to our students and staff and in and, and the school district. Um, so this next question is for Chad and it is a safety question. Uh, will there be ways to close off unused sections outside of the class time that are uh, that can be considered to help keep youth safe uh, in, in school? Yeah, Savian, that's a great question. Uh, actually, on our just our first round of doing these master plans, um, our design team recognized that one, uh, East High School doesn't have a, a sprinkler system. So it doesn't have a fire suppression system. Uh, and uh, that would be something that would be included uh, in some of the safety renovations that would happen at East. What that affords us uh, is that we've got um, all of these stairwells that run down uh, the length of East High School to get you from the, the third floor into the basement. Um, and it seems like there's a stairwell. Brendan knows this all too well because he's running them uh, to, to uh, get up and down the East High School and making sure that students are in class. We would actually have the possibility of actually closing um, some of the most problematic stairwells at East High School that are uh, both uh, kind of underutilized and a supervision uh, issue uh, because uh, fire code would allow us to do that because we'd have a fire suppression system. Uh, we'd also make sure that we did a full analysis of, of, of all of uh, kind of things that would be welcoming and safe uh, at East High School with our design firm. Um, and we know there are other things that continue to kind of be areas of concern at East High School because of the physical structure uh, that we would be able to modify and make sure we're far better uh, following all the renovations. So I hope that answered your question. We'd actually be able to abandon some of those stairwells that drive uh, East High School adults crazy because they're so handy to hide in. Uh, I did hall duty uh, at, e at East High School seventh period forever. Uh, and I knew the exact hallways I could find per golders every time. Uh, so those things will likely be gone uh, post referendum. Love to hear it. Uh, and just as a follow up, would we consider having a youth protection specialist to review the new layout uh, for the review of those safety gaps? Yeah, um, certainly. Um, I'm, at, I'm actually interviewing design firms that will be uh, working on these projects in the coming weeks. Um, and we're looking at a number of specialists, anywhere from safety specialists to theater design specialists, heating and cooling specialists, um, all the way around that I should be part of that design team. So um, yeah, safety and climate will be uh, certainly part of that uh, overall package. Thank you so much. And I guess this question is for the whole team, uh, but uh, how would we go about getting ideas uh To the, the cultural values of this community and school. Um, Savian, I can I can certainly start, and then others from the team can can, can chip in. Uh, that's where the year of planning is going to be so essential. Uh, I um, I could certainly hand the the plans I shared with the community over tonight uh, to a team of architects. Uh, they could draw up a plan set, and we could put it out to bid. Um, and uh, that project would probably have uh, very little of the influence of the East High School community uh, and the culture uh, embedded in it. Uh, we need to spend a full year talking to the community, talking to the students, uh, and making sure that uh, these projects make East High School and its culture and community come to life and reflect what East High School really is. Um, so it, it's, gonna, it's gonna be all on my team to make sure we hear the voice of those students and the community uh, and make sure that uh, we preserve the historic nature of the building. We take into account all of the culture that makes East High School so great uh, and that it all comes to life uh, when we're there renovating the spaces. Um, so that's kind of my angle on how it, it, I'm not gonna do this alone and just hand this thing out. Uh, East High School is gonna play a big part in what it, what it looks like when it's all done. No, I'll add to that, Chad. Um, my door is open for this as in all things to our students, to our families, to our community members, the things that I said earlier were not only based on my own experience in this building, they're based on the many, many conversations I've had with other stakeholders in our community about what it's like to be here. Um, and no decision for East High School is gonna be made in the best interest of our students and families without our students and families being involved in that process. And just to add to that, if you think back when we uh, redid the East Theater. There was extensive involvement from the community, especially the theater community, in the design to make that space a wonderful space and really is the model for our additional um, theater. So going back to our 
community is really part of the planning process that we feel very strongly about. Thank you. I'll just add, I remember uh, marching around East with Mr. Richard Scott when I was in, uh, you know, first, second, third, fourth grade uh, as a part of his, his step show back then. So I definitely want to see that history preserved and reflected in the new building. Um, I'll pass it back off to my colleague Ananda. Um, if she has any other follow-up questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Savian. Uh, those are great questions and great answers from everybody. I wanted to bring uh, Dr. Pryor's voice um, because I heard that you have a fantastic economic brain. And of course, we are hearing a lot of questions about the cost benefits of of these updates, you know, the current economic distress that our communities are experiencing, who benefits from, from the, those updates, from those projects? Um, can you talk a little bit about that with, with us and make sure that you unmute yourself? Most definitely, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me say this first of all, I am, and I'm still Dr. Jenkins' words, I am pumped up just to feel the energy here in this, I'm gonna say this room tonight is unparalleled to what I've ever witnessed. And I've been on the other side of this thing before. I've been on Brandon's side before. And I know the excitement that goes along with this from not only the students and the community, but the faculty and staff. You know, Dr. Jenkins said something earlier about 21st century standards. All right, 21st century standards. And you know, when he said that, immediately what came to mind for me was vertical alignment. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that our facilities should reflect our expectations for student academic outcomes. And you know, this initiative right here gives us an opportunity to take a huge step towards that. Our kids really, really deserve it. Our community really, really deserve it. And when you talk about the cost factor, I, I always say this, can you put a price on success? Can you put a price on shaping our young minds for the future? And can you put a price on pride for a community? And I would say no. Thank you. Ooh, that was, woof. I was like some mic dropping here. I want, I want to do a follow up to that because I don't I don't want to I don't want to let you off yet. I'm ready. I'm I'm ready. <laughs> right. Um. You know you I we know a little bit of your background. You've been in higher ed. You know you were like our next door neighbor. What What are you excited about? Uh, you know, our high school students, you know, this is going to happen in all the high schools, but we're talking today about East, but what is, what is your, what is exciting you about all those projects and in particular about East? So we, you heard us talk about, I mean, you, I'm sure you've driven by East, East Washington a few times. You've seen the, the, you know, the, the, this, this gigantic, uh, landmark, this, this building that is so iconic to right. Madison and to, to East Washington. What, what, is making, what is making you excited? What is getting you excited about the projects and in particular about the East High School project? Well, well, let me say this. I'm seven days old here now, seven days old, and I'm excited. I've learned a lot. But <laughs> the, the thing that I got first is this, the energy, the synergy, the movement that I see right now, you know, when you see movement happening, that says that there's a vision somewhere out there. That's saying that there's expectations. That's, that's saying that uh, there's a value system in place. And what's so exciting about this for me, it's all around the city. You go to the east side, something is happening. You go to the west side, east side, south side, there's something happening. And you know what? Everybody wants to be a part of something that is happening and that's positive. And you know, it's just a wonderful opportunity for the district itself, the school uh, community and the uh, um, outside community to see the investment that we're willing to make in our young people. Because see, our young people, they're the future. They're the ones that's gonna lead this next charge and take us into this next century. And so to see the adult figures, to see the business community, I was on a phone, I'm not a phone call, a Zoom today where Dr. Jenkins spoke, 
uh, with chamber, it's just to see the energy where everyone is coming together like this. I'm telling you, it is not happening everywhere. And I'm just proud to be a part of this movement. And I just can't wait to see what the end results are going to be. Oh, I'm getting all per girl and excited over here. Thank and you so excitement much. excitement is exciting me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Fryer. I want to bring uh, uh, Mike and Brendan back uh, to talk a little bit about uh, what are some of the things that are exciting. And Mike, you and I know each other for a long time, back to the Sherman days. And then you, uh, you know, followed uh, to become a principal at East. And you've been, uh, before you were in the middle school, you worked in different schools in, in Illinois. So talk to us a little bit about what is it, what is it for you, all this, this change, this project, you know, what's exciting, what, like, what is important to you, and what are some of the things that you experience also with students? I know some of the things that we talked about is, is the welcome center and, you know, the, the offices being closer to the entrance. I know that over the years, you know, different, different administration has tried to to address that in different ways. Can you talk to us a little bit about sort of the, the patches that we have done in the past and what what is, you know, what is exciting you about, you know, finding some like more sustainable solutions to all those issues? Um, well, the first thing, I mean, the question that you ask is what excites me about this, this possibility? The excitement for it is and how this is going to truly affect our fu future pergolders, right? our first graders all the way through seventh and eighth grade as they eventually make it into the high schools and they're gonna be able to have that experience. Um, um, when I worked at East High School, when I worked at Sherman and I would visit on our eighth grade, ninth grade transition evenings, I'm uh, walking through those front doors. Um, um, something that truly interested me when we first started talking about it when I was the principal was the ability to have our office to have our, our student services down by the front door. Um, uh, and so that we are there meeting and greeting and talking with our community right there, that we're able to, to immediately be that service industry. industry. I, I, I'm so excited about that opportunity. The other thing that I'm excited about, and Brendan hit it on the head as he was, as he spoke about his experience as a teacher, um, uh, we have great teachers and, and our students do an outstanding job, but being in a biology or chemistry classroom where there's just a random pillar um, sitting in the middle of the class and you're peering around those corners trying to see, I'm uh, having, when you look at some of the, the, um, the projections of what this is going to look like, the, this, this common collaborative spaces, man, that's just going to be an amazing experience for those. I think those are the two biggest things that I'm excited about. Thank you so much, Mike. Brendan? Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that. Um, you know, Savion mentioning being in the building as a first, second, third grader for step class. Uh, and Mr. Hernandez mentioning, you know, the future pergolders. It also, it also needs to be said that uh, obviously East serves our students first and foremost, but it serves the entire community as well. Uh, anyone who's been in here knows on any given day of the week, in the evening, on the weekends, there are ages four through 80 in this place. They're playing ball, they're participating in cultural events, they're eating food together, studying Mexican dance, doing gymnastics, ACT prep, plays are going on, et cetera. Um, and this new design supports so many of those things that make for a thriving community beyond just academic learning that happens in the classroom. So investing in this building is, is really more than just about investing in our current students. It's investing in a whole lot more than that, uh, both current and future community members. But I'd also just like to second what, what both Mr. Hernandez and Dr. Pryor said. You know, I really think that you can measure the quality of a facility and its functionality, but it also communicates to people how much you care about them. And that correlates to student learning. You know, I'm excited to see students walk into this building and receive the message that we care about their learning. Um, and state-of-the-art resources provide opportunities. They provide new and better learning opportunities, but they also affirm the value of education. And we've seen how that elevates student performance and the improvements that we've made in our theater and our field house. Performances got better in the theater after it was renovated. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of people's work went into making that the case, but also the facility 
help to make that the case. The same could be said of the field house, and I hope to see that for our whole building, whatever spaces students are working in here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brennan. You really brought us home to what is really happening, right? Um, so my next question, I wanted to ask Dr. Jenkins and Chad, and I'm, I'm curious if Callie also has something to say as well. Um, you know, there is, a, there, there is a, a scoring of all the buildings. Uh, first of all, let me start with that, of, you know, where, where all the buildings were at, the, the in, like an inventory of the buildings. And they were graded in different, at different levels. And the high schools got different gradings. How, how are you thinking of the allocation of resources uh, for, for the high schools? And also why, I mean, you know, Mike said that like when he was working at Sherman, like I've been at Sherman many times, there's a lot of projects that we could, you know, that we could do at Sherman that are also overdue. There's a lot of projects that are also overdue, you know, at different schools, at Gompers and, you know, uh, at, uh, at Lappin. So, you know, talk to me a little bit about this focus on the high schools and also, uh, you know, the different amounts for different high schools. And maybe that second part is, is for Kelly and Chad. But Dr. Jenkins, why don't you kick us out with this, with this conversation? Well, I just tell you, I'm just so proud of the fact walking in and having an opportunity, the referendum was already on the table. And I wanted to really understand why we were doing what we were doing. And when I noticed that we focused not just on the four high schools, but we're also focusing on creating a place, an alternative space for capital as well. And we're looking down the road for what we need to do for our other school, Shabazz. Uh, but then it went beyond that. We think about the fact that we have not addressed the South Side in terms of bringing in some degree of attention and equity much deserved. We focused on that as well. We start looking at all the bills, you're correct. Once we receive the grades back, there are many needs in our district, but right off the bat, we're focusing a third of the student, focusing attention on a third of our students with this particular plan. Ultimately, they matriculate from 4K through high school. We hear 4K parents talk about it right now. My kid's gonna graduate from La Folle. My kid's gonna graduate from East. My kid's gonna graduate from Memorial. My kid's gonna graduate from West. So. I think it was brilliant to start with the high schools because ultimately, even though it's a third of the students, all students in our district is the hope that they would matriculate through our high schools. And then with the other moves, I think it was just very good stewardship to say, hey, we have children traveling 45 minutes on a bus right now. We need to do something. And again, I'll say it, to show that equity strategy towards a community that needed it. And now, even though we've been having some conversations about the decisions that we've made, I am hearing an excitement about things going on in our community. So I, I am just very excited. And I'll definitely have uh, Chad and Kelly talk about some of the other uh, pieces. We know we have other work to do, but this is a great start uh, to moving us into the 21st century. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. I see that we have a little bit of uh, static happening on your mic, but I hope that folks uh, that are watching us uh, could understand your, your really important point. Um, again, just a reminder, we're, we'll be wrapping up soon, but if folks still have questions, please uh, make sure to add your questions on our Facebook Live, on our YouTube video, and we'll bring them uh, to the conversation. So Chad and Kelly, talk to us a little bit about the allocation of resources, uh, you know, in particular, when it comes to, you know, uh, some of our questions are around like, you know, where the students of color are at, you know, how do we, how we're doing this equitable way to calculate and allocate those resources uh, to the high schools? Um, I can certainly start and then uh, Kelly can chime in. Uh, you know, I, um, I think uh, Kelly and I did the lion's share of, uh, of those uh, 50 input sessions. Uh, and uh, we heard common themes around uh, accessibility, about safety, uh, about uh, certainly upgraded instructional spaces. We certainly heard common themes around green and sustainable building design. But another theme we heard at almost every session we went to uh, was uh, why isn't my school uh, gonna get a little bit more of this chunk of money? 
Uh, and it didn't matter if we were at East La Follette, West or Memorial, uh, all of these schools had valid arguments in terms of uh, plant size, diversity of school, number of students that attend there, uh, East just got a new theater. Why should East get uh, uh, $70 million? Hey, West High School just got an upgrade in, in heating and cooling. Why should they get $70 million? All valid arguments. Uh, the fact of the matter is we worked closely with our school board on these, on these project pr uh, proposals, continued back and forth with our community, uh, and there's more work to do in, in these buildings than $70 million. Uh, if we wanted to spend $100 million in each of these facilities, we could. These projects are going to be great. Uh, and th these are going to be projects that pay us back for decades to come. Uh, but it was important for us to have a, a basic foundation that was going to happen at all four of these sites. Uh, new, new windows, new lights, uh, heating and cooling units, uh, a new roof membrane, uh, that, and all things that will, will feed into that facilities condition index. Uh, but there are certain things in there that uh, that don't show up. Uh, La Follette High School doesn't ha even have air conditioning yet, uh, and uh, and East High School is partially air conditioned if it's working. Uh, Memorial High School uh, it, it is in the same boat. Um, so I guess in a nutshell, there is uh, there's plenty of work to go around in all of the uh, in all of these facilities. Um, when we make equitable plan designs, uh, that's going to be when the community, Brendan and the students and the staff step in and say, uh, this is a, a, a feature in this school that we have to have. It needs to reflect our student body and it's something we wanna highlight. Um, and, uh, and it's gonna be on us to make sure that, uh, just as I said before, uh, the culture and what's important at East High School comes out in these projects, period. Um, and we're gonna make sure we spend that $70 million the very best we can. Uh, but I don't think, we were not interested in getting into a, a finger pointing issue uh, across the city of Madison around who gets more. Uh, there's plenty to go around and these things are gonna be great when they're done. Thanks Ananda and thanks Chad. So I think Chad answered this kind of why $70 million question very well. I wanna get back to your answer or your question about uh, what about all the other schools? There is no doubt about it that there is more need in this community and, and our facilities across this city than any one referendum could possibly hold um, at one time. We wouldn't even have enough construction firms available to do the work if we attempted to take on all 50 schools at once. So we know this is a phased approach um, to get behind the facilities work um, that we need. We have a long range facility plan on our website which lays out um, the future beyond this particular referendum. So we've intentionally laid out the finances related to this um, facility referendum such that whether it's four or six years that this board might be ready to take the next step in the next group of projects, we will be ready. The financing will be such um, that it won't be just layering on top of this referendum. We'll be able to do it in a year of which uh, the taxes will naturally dip because of the financial planning we're doing now. Um, but in, a, in addition to that, um, tying in the operating referendum, I started by saying that these two are very tightly linked. Um, the additional budget attached to our operating refer referendum will allow the board more flexibility to make decisions um, in Chad's uh, budget as it relates to investing in many needed projects across elementary and middle schools. So there will be some flexibility opening up. A large share of Chad's budget right now is spent in high schools, just keeping them up and running. And when the high school projects are done, it will allow a lot of our current budget to be more available to the elementary and middle school such that those projects will also start to get done at a much faster pace than is available today. Mm, thank you so much, Callie, and thank you, Chad. A follow up to that question and something that I feel extremely proud of, and I'm sure uh, I share the sentiments with my colleagues around that as well, is uh, AMSD's commitment to environmental and sustainable practices and to becoming a much more greener district. How are those projects aligned and potentially propelling that commitment? And without them, without those projects, where like where are we where are we uh, where are we at? And Kelly, you mentioned how much of the budget is just to like so people are thinking that the schools are the schools are closed, the buildings are closed now, that there is no cost. And that is not true because the buildings are so old and a lot of things need to be running at a constant time. And then of course, 
with older buildings, the cost of fixing, the cost of maintenance are much more, uh, 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 you know, relevant. So can, can both of you talk a little bit with us about how those projects are aligned to our commitment to be uh, a much more uh, environmentally conscious school district? Um, I can certainly uh, start. Kelly may add any, even some of the work we've done around uh, sustainability and, uh, and um, carbon-free energy just over the last couple of years. Um, as I mentioned in my opening statement, we actually heard that need loud and clear uh, in those community sessions and worked back and forth with the school board and actually inserted um, a sustainability specific chapter into our master plans that you can see on our website. Um, highlights in those projects would be um, a very large solar array um, at East High School. Uh, we are going to replace every light bulb in the place to have high efficiency LED lights. Um, we, uh, all of the windows were really placed in our high schools. Two of our high schools, Memorial uh, and La Follette, still have original windows. Some of those are single pane glass. Um, many of you know that even walking in the doors, you can see how inefficient these spaces are. I know a lot of people have seen the boilers at East High School that look like they're the engine of the Titanic. Um, all of those will be uh, replaced as well. Um, and I also want to kind of just quickly speak because I think the two are aligned. Uh, also, uh, this idea of a sustainable and safe environment uh, in, a, in our uh, COVID-19 era, um, we're actually already working with our design team to make sure that the upgraded efficient heating and cooling systems are also as safe as they possibly can be uh, to make sure that we've got the correct amount of fresh air exchanges happening in our buildings, that our air is filtered better than it is right now, uh, that we potentially even have hand washing stations and hallways, uh, touch-free plumbing in our bathrooms that so drastically need uh, upgrading, but those will be both safe and efficient new plumbing appliances. Um, I think the, the, the package all kind of comes together. Um, I hope that answered your question around sustainability. I don't know if Kelly had anything else to add to that. Yeah, I think um, one of the exciting aspects of the environmental projects built in is the fact that it has a very natural return on investment. Um, many of the projects Chad just talked about have less than a 10 year return on investment. Um, yeah. Those projects will be paid off well before the full referendum is. And where we free up that money then is in our operating side of our budget, which is the one that we're, you know, just constantly pulling for where we need resources. And so as we make our utility bills cheaper, it just frees up the funding available to our schools and our instructional side of the house, which is just another goal of the sustainability efforts. Um, other efforts across the district that the operating budget will help support with the passing with a passing referendum would be we're in the process of moving our entire fleet over to electric vehicles right now. Um, we've just started that work and being able to in, continue to invest in turning that fleet over will continue to drive the savings of the overall district. There's a ton of projects that look like that in the food service world too. Um, but we're really excited to move forward aligned with the board's goal to be carbon free by 2040. Um, and these projects just help us to move forward in, in that direction. Mm, thank you so much, Kelly, to speak to the cost uh, efficiencies that we are going to experience uh, by actualizing those projects. And thank you, Chad, for reminding us that you know, in the COVID time and in the future of COVID time, and uh, we need to really make sure that uh, air circulation and uh, air quality are, are paramount to, to our ability to be healthy in, in, in those learning spaces. I wanted to close uh, my part of the session before I turn to, to my colleague, Savian, with you, Brendan. Uh, we have talked in length about the issues that currently exist at East. We talked about specifics of the project, but I was really hoping that you could walk us through your, like, your vision. What, is, what does it look like and what does it feel like to park at East High School and look at the building after it has all this renovation? Can you, can you walk us through like, you know, the inspiration that this project is bringing to you, the real things that are happening currently at the district, at the, at the, at the school level. How do you see this, the students benefiting from those spaces? How do you see the staff and partners benefiting from those spaces? Walk us through 
as you arrive, you know, the first day after all this renovation is done. Yeah, thank you, Ananda. I mean, um, Dr. Pryor mentioned it earlier, but I, I think when I listen to all of the presenters speak tonight and I, and I hear the questions and I look at the design plans, I'm just imagining a space that, that has energy, um, a space that celebrates our students and their identities, a space you walk into and you know you're cared about, where you see people who are there to help you, um, whether you're a student or a family member. Um, I'm imagining a space that people want to be in. And our kids do want to be here. They want to be in school, believe it. Uh, now more than ever, they're admitting, even if they didn't want to admit before. Um, but it's not because you walk in door four and you're overwhelmed with the space that you're in. It's because of the people here. And the people make the school, but the building, as I said earlier, does not fully reflect what the people here are trying to say to our students and families when they come in here every day. And I wanna see the look on their faces when they do. Um, from a functionality standpoint, the truth of the matter is that kids will do more, will learn more, and staff members will perform their jobs more effectively with upgraded facilities, with better technology, with state-of-the-art spaces, with a design that actually reflects our instructional model, which is collaborative um, and open and student-centered. Um, and looking down the road, this isn't really painting a picture for you so much about the first day, but I'm also excited to see improved student learning outcomes out of these improvements to the building. I know they will happen. As I said, I've seen that in other areas of the building and elsewhere that I've been. Um, so what excites me is the idea of students coming in the first day, but also seeing students leave here four years after they start high school in a better place as learners than they would have been if we didn't make these changes to our facilities and provide the type of environment that they can thrive in and that our staff can thrive in. Mm, thank you so much, Brendan, for speaking to how you emotionally connected to the project, but also your hopes and dreams for our students as they engage in, in a much more welcoming space and a much more, uh, uh, a much better space for learning, a much more conducive space for learning and for thriving. So thank you so much for walking us through that. Uh, with that, I'm gonna pass uh, to my colleague, Savian, and there's, I think there's a couple more questions here before we wrap up. So much, Ananda. Yeah. Um, let's get to these last few questions, then we can wrap up. Uh, let's see here. So um, I, I know that we talked a little bit about the, the calculation to allocate us seventy million um, equally across all four high schools. Uh, can we talk about how we applied an equity lens to that? Decision, uh, because I know each high school or each school community has their own unique uh, situation going on and we're trying to provide as much discretion for those communities to determine how those funds are spent. Uh, but could we just um, chat and Kelly talk about uh, how an equity lens was applied to that, uh, that choice? Thank you, Savian, for your question. It looks like we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. So I hope that folks understood the question was around how do how are we applying equity lens in regards to distribution of resources? And we started already this conversation, but I think we needed to bring that a little bit closer. Um, I can take uh, one more uh, crack at this, and I don't know if Kelly or uh, even Ananda, if you're interested, you guys kind of helped us uh, set up uh, the you know the cost that we're we're spending on each of these projects. Um, it's uh, it's my belief that you can spin this a number of ways. Um, I, I actually think we have, uh, if we want to talk uh, race and equity, uh, the most uh, African American students in the district, uh, number wise, actually go to West High School. Um, and uh, the, I, I, it, it's my take that these projects actually come to life in terms of uh, our values, in terms of how we build them and how we spend the 70 million uh, when we get into the design work of what happens at East High School. Uh, and uh, and what comes to life in these projects will be what we value uh, in terms of uh, the East High School culture and, uh, and, and where we see East High School going. Uh, these project, the, the projects don't necessarily, uh, it, it's not about the $70 million, it's how we spend it and how we build them and how uh, the students can see themselves coming to life and the staff uh, feel valued in terms of where they're going instructionally. Uh, and uh, as I said before, there's more work to be done than $70 million. Um, and I, I don't think uh, we as a district, if we had one brand new high school and three old dogs, 
uh, we wouldn't have put any money into the new high school. That's not the case. We've got four old dogs that need work um, and they all need a bunch of work. And that's why we have $70 million uh, that we're putting towards all of these projects. Um, and uh, our value in, in terms of what we think of our students and the equity work we're gonna do uh, will come to life when we design them. And more importantly, come to life in terms of how we meet the needs of our students in our classrooms. Um, that's where the equ equity work actually will happen. Uh, how are these? How are our staff members uh, reaching every single kid and making sure they have what they need? Yeah, I'm going to respond, but I'm going to take it up a higher level, which is every year we take our entire district's budget through our equity tool and our equ equity conversations with our board. It's incredibly important to this administration and to the board. We re uh, review all of our financial investments in line with our with our equity lens and in line with our strategic uh, priorities um, embedded within our strategic framework. Um, and with Dr. Jenkins kind of here, um, we are really excited to look forward to investing um, the funding, whether it's from the operating or the facilities referendum um, in line with the vision and the direction of where this district is headed. And I think our strategic equity, our strategic framework is very clear that our core values are tied to equity. Um, and I look forward to doing that work with Dr. Jenkins moving forward. Yeah, thank you so much, Callie, and thank you, Chad. Sivian, do you want to try your mic again and see? Um, I think it's going to continue to cut out. Okay, I'll I'll try to close us out. Uh, I'm sorry, everyone listening, if that was a, a little bit annoying. Uh, it's the world that we are now in the virtual, so I uh, really appreciate everyone's answering and uh the last question it was great i'm i'm so excited to be living in a community where people are like wait what about the equity lens like what's happening with that and uh i just wanted to reiterate what chad and kelly said like you know we we go through this process quite often and in the case of the high schools we are this is universal strategy right like this is this is really providing uh, learning access accessibility to all our students. Uh, the equity strategies are going to be different by each school. And so I hope that you heard from Brendan and from Mike and from Chad and Kelly and from Dr. Jenkins and Dr. Pryor, like what are some of the targeted specifics to East that we're going to elevate? And uh, those 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 things are not exhausted yet, right? Like there are there is the community input, there is the community voice that is going to continue to inform what is needed in that building, and we're going to make sure that we respond that uh, to to the to the best degree possible and match those expectations to the degree that we can. Uh, I wanted to say thank you again to to everyone that's been watching us, to listening to us, and to submitting really great questions. Uh, I want to make sure that I say there's a there's quite a few programmers watching and commenting and saying Eastside Pride is unbeatable. Thank you for coming together to talk about this with us. So I wanted to say a great thank you to everyone. Uh, Dr. Jenkins, do you want to try to see if your mic is is working well and, and say a couple of other things to to final to finalize our, our, our work? Can you hear me now? Okay, well, let me just say, first of all, thank you for your comments. Uh, those were beautiful. And I wanted to say thank you to the entire team. And I hope that our community can see the commitment just through these individuals, and there are so many more, uh, the commitment that we have towards our children. This is a very exciting time. And I'm just really pumped up and ready to try to lead this charge with our team. And we have some of the best staff, but we also have some of the best children. Uh, I'm just telling you, anywhere that you can go. And the East Side Pride is alive and well tonight. Thank you guys so much for your presentation, but you can just feel it. And I have to say a special shout out to our principal, sir. Welcome. You are doing it at East Side High. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone. And if for those of you that are, that are tuning in and wondering like what's happening at La Fala, what's happening at Memorial, what's happening at West, uh, make sure to check on our Facebook. There'll be a link to uh, to those sessions as well. This is the first session. Thank you everyone for, for watching. Thank you for all the presenters. And I'm gonna pass to Brendan to close our, our session tonight. Thank you everybody. Um... Thank you, Dr. Jenkins, for your words and to the rest of our colleagues for being here tonight. Uh, and thanks to everyone out there who's watching and for the great questions that have been submitted. 
Um, most importantly, thanks for supporting our school and our community and our students present and future. Uh, what we're doing here is really important. And I don't think there's anything more important. That's why I'm in this job. Um, we can't do it without the support of our community, both inside and outside of this building. Our kids deserve it. Um, and I know that you undoubtedly have more questions. I believe there is a place for you to submit them, um, but I wanna leave it there for tonight and just say thank you for being here and have a great night.